Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Okay, we'll have 20 Don't minutes with the student athletes from Kansas State. We have Marquise No, Naquan Tomlin, and Keontae Johnson. Remind everybody, please turn the volume down on your uh, cell phones. Raise your hand. Let us get the handheld so mics to you. Let us know who you are and who you're affiliated with. We'll start. Front row, first question. Yeah, D. Scott Fritch and uh, K-State Athletics. Uh, Naquan, you mentioned before that this was kind of a dream come true. And I'm wondering if you could expound upon that. Tell me exactly why this is a dream come true for you. Um, how you doing? Uh, I just, it's a dream come true because uh, growing up where I come from uh, in Harlem, like not every kid gets an opportunity like this. And so I just want to, you know, uh, thank God and thank my family, you know, to like keep me like pushing and doing what I have to do. And uh, my teammates around me, you know, they help support me as well. So, middle of the room. Hey guys, Kellis Robinette here from the Kansas City Star. I got a question for both Keontae and Naquan. When you're going up against a guy who had 25 rebounds the night before you play him, what's just your mindset to kind of keep him off the glass? Keontae. It's a team effort. It's, um, it's going to be a team effort. Um, we know. He gives them a lot of second chance points, so we just got to limit a offensive rebound, um, box him out, find him when they get shots up. I mean, he's gonna get his no matter what. I mean, that's what he do this whole year. He was national player of the year last year, so um, we just gotta have a team effort. Um, we all gonna come together. and We gonna have a solution for it. Naquan, uh, he pretty much uh, said it, but yeah, definitely a team effort. Uh, you know, we have to make sure we rebound uh, all five guys in the paint. Uh, so we can limit them from getting second chance points or just offensive rebounds. So, yeah, definitely team effort. To our right. Yeah, John Clay, Lexington Herald Leader. Keontae, you mentioned last night that you and Oscar have a relationship. Can you just talk a little more about that? Um, I mean, I know him since high school. Um, he he was one of the main person that reached out to me uh, when I was going to my – when I collapsed in the game. Uh, and we've just been close since then. Um, I text him. He texts here and there, like every, probably once every two months or something. But I mean, real cool, like one of my brothers. So, left aisle. Aaron Gershon with the Cats Paws in Lexington. Keontae, obviously, Coach Cal last year talked about how he got emotional just seeing you. And I think he offered you to score on your senior night. Just what did that mean to you? And just going up against his teams in the past, what, what, what do you remember of those matchups? Um, I mean, it means a lot from Coach Cal. He's one of uh, one of the Great coach. Um, we have a great relationship. Just playing against him and just show the respect that he had for my game. Um, last year he wanted me to score, but I didn't know at the time, so I just kissed the floor. But now I really appreciate Coach Kyle and just everything he done. Middle of the room. Yeah, uh, Alec Bussey, Rivals. Naquan, when you watch film of Oscar and his rebounding abilities, what is most impressive about his ability to kind of control his body within the air and kind of create space by using his body? Uh, uh, he's, uh, I mean, he's a really good player. Uh, he's real physical, and I feel like, uh, you know, his strength helps him, especially he has a high motor, so. Uh, you know, you just have to limit him, you know, again, uh, deep paint touches. So we can limit him from being, you know, close to the rim and just have to box him out. A reminder to everybody that recording press conference on your cell phones and cameras is prohibited. Front row. Yeah, for um, D. Scott Fritch and K-State Athletics, for Marquise and Keontae, I was just curious if you might be able to fill me in on just the experience of having Naquan on the team this year and maybe his upside going forward. Marquise. Um, Naquan is a tremendous player uh, and an even better person. 
Um, to have him on the team this year is a blessing um, because he just started playing basketball what four years ago, so his upside is is really high. Um, he still has a lot of things that he could work on and get better, and he's already already so talented. So just having him this year is a huge piece of of our success in our team, and I can't wait to see you know down the line how much better he gets. Keontae. Yeah, Naquan, he's a big piece for us. Um, he spaced the floor out for us, mismatch for other teams. And, I mean, that just helps get everybody else involved in the offense and scoring. And, I mean, like he said, he only played four years. It's his first um, year on the big stage, and he's doing a hell of a job at it. So, just he's got a great upside, and just I can't wait to see what he got in store for sure. Back right. I'm Mark Story from the Lexington Herald Leader. Marquise, uh, Kaysan Wallace, the Kentucky point guard, is big. You know, he's a big guy. What's the challenge of playing against a bigger guard? And just what are your impressions of him? Um, I've been playing against big guards my whole life. I mean, I'm 5'7 um, on a good day. Um, so that, that, that wouldn't be a challenge um, to play against, you know, bigger and tougher opponents. Uh, my heart will uh, determine how the game will go. And I'm gonna leave it all on the line, you know, tomorrow. Um, but this is a total team effort. This is Kentucky versus K-State. This is not about me and Kaysen. Um, So I just, I'm gonna do everything in my power to get the win and help my team win. Back left. Yeah, uh, back here. No, Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. Marquise, um, what does it mean to be a basketball player from New York City? I mean, it's, it's, it's a blessing, I mean, I get my toughness, my grittiness from just playing in parks in New York City. Um, like Naquan said, coming, coming from where we come from, a lot of kids don't get this opportunity um, to play on this stage, to play in college basketball and at this level. So, you know, I'm just embracing it. Um, I'm trying to be an inspiration to kids back home um, to show them that, you know, you could do whatever you, you want to do if you work hard, believe in God, and, you know, trust yourself. Middle of the room. Marquise, I got two for you. Uh, first off, what time did you uh, actually fall asleep this morning, I guess it was? <laughs> and secondly, do you think having some athletic bigs like Naquan and David can actually work to your advantage in this game when you're playing against a team that has a traditional five? Um, to answer the first question, I went to sleep around like 4 a.m. Um, and woke up at 10.30, but that's the grind. Um, you know, I'm... I'm I'm thankful for it. That means we survived in advance. Um, and secondly, uh, I mean, guys like Naquan and David and Bebe um, are really good bigs um, because they give us three different looks. Naquan, you know, spaces the floor out, and he much a, he's like a guard. Um, and David and Bebe give us that, you know, inside presence that we need, that rim protection that we need. Um, and I feel like. Uh, tomorrow will be a great uh, challenge for us and the bigs to step up to, you know, help us help help out the team win with with containing Oscar Shibe and you know just we have really good bigs and tomorrow will be a great challenge for them. Right in front of me, third row. Yes, uh, Jeff Drummond with uh, Rivals Kentucky. Um, Question for any of you guys. Uh, you've played in a great league, had all kinds of uh, high-end competition this year. Does Kentucky remind you of any of the teams you've faced so far, you know, either in watching them on TV or in film study? We'll start from our far right. Keontae? Um, I mean, they have, like, similar players that resembles from other teams. I mean, I feel like everybody play physical, um, fast. Um, they, play, they get out on fast break like TCU, so – we know we got to limit them off that, and they rebound like West Virginia. So we just, I mean, we kind of used to it. We just, we know what it takes to win, and we know we have to do as a team to get it up. So, Naquan, <clears throat> uh, like Keontae said, they do have some similar players to like, but that we've gone against uh, in our conference. But I don't think we've had to play against a center like Oscar, uh, like a dominant big like that. So. Uh, that would be something new to us. But I think with the plan that we have, I feel like we'll execute to our best ability. Marquise? Um, yeah, like both the guys said, uh, we, we play in one of the toughest conferences in, in the country. We play in the Big 12. Um, every night is a tough night. 
Um, so that, I mean, it won't change in that aspect. But like Naquan said, we haven't faced a big like Oscar yet. Um, so it'll be a total team effort um, on stopping him and limiting him to, uh, to one shot and one opportunity. Second row to our right. Mitch Fortner came in radio in Manhattan for Marquise and Aquan. I know it's one game at a time, but a win tomorrow means Madison Square Garden. Being from New York City, is there extra motivation to now get to the garden? Aquan. Uh, it's definitely some motivation. Uh, one is motivation to continue playing and motivation just to play in the garden. So uh, yeah, that's that. And, uh, yeah, but like you said, we want to take everything one at a time and focus on what we have to do right now. Marquise? Uh, it's definitely some motivation uh, to go back home. Um, I ain't go home in three years. I stood uh, at my school and just worked out. So it'll be, you know, a blessing just to go back to, to Madison Square Garden, uh, my hometown. But we got to take it one day at a time. Uh, we got to focus on our scout today, focus on our g game plan on how to stop, you know, Kentucky. But, um, yeah, it's some motivation. In front of me, middle of the room, back. Arnie Green from the Topeka Capital Journal. Um, Coach Calipari talked about the, the challenge you guys present as a matchup because you are you have a lot of kind of positionless players. But he said, on the flip side, you guys have to adjust just to their style too. Do you, do you see this as kind of a a game of contrasting styles, and uh, who do you like as far as the style? Keontae. Um, I mean, I feel like if we just focus probably on ourselves, we'll be fine. Um, I mean, we we got to watch. We still watching films, still learning them. But I feel like every. I mean, we haven't faced. Like he said, we in the toughest conference, so we face different styles of play uh, and how different teams play. Well, we played an SEC team before, so I mean, I don't think it would be anything uh, hard that we can't contain, really. Naquan? Uh, yeah, like what Keontae said, I don't think it would be something that uh, would be much of a challenge besides uh, Oscar, but, you know. That's it. I mean, that's it. Um, we play in the toughest league in the – like I said, in the country, playing the Big 12 from top to bottom. You know, it's a tough night. Um, but I like my chances with, with my guys um, because we are gritty, we are tough, we are hard-nosed. Uh, we have a great coaching staff from top to bottom. And I know that, you know, they'll do a good job of game planning um, versus Kentucky. Middle of the room. Yeah, Daryl Bird with Cats, Paws, and Lexington. For Marquise, I think everybody assumes 5'7 is a disadvantage. I'm curious, what do you think are the advantages to being a smaller point guard that you can do against some of the bigger defenders? Uh, when I fall, I'm closer to the floor than everybody else. So <laughs> that's a advantage. Um, nah, but I mean, just my toughness and my heart, you know, just uh, overpowers, you know, any height or any, you know, structure to anybody. Um, I just play with that passion. Third row. John Huang, NOLA Media. This is for anyone who wants to answer, but normally the, the first game of the tournament is, is the most difficult. You get through that, you get that under your belt. Uh, how, do you, how far can you guys take this thing? Yeah. Do you have any specific goals in mind now that you've gotten the first one? Keontae? Uh, I mean, our goal from the beginning of the season was national championship, so. I mean, we always just preach, just take one game at a time, never try to look ahead and focus on other schools and other outcomes, just worry about what we can control. And yesterday we went 1-0, so now we're trying to focus on Kentucky and go 1-0 there so we can get to Madison Square Garden for the Sweet 16. Naquan? Uh, most definitely. Uh, I feel like... Um, I think we got these in, basically. Uh, that shit too. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> we forgot. <laughs> a lot of times, the first game of the tournament is is the toughest. You know, is there a sense of relief that you've gotten that under your belt, and now that you've gotten that, how far can you take this thing? Uh, we're just gonna go one at a time. You know, getting the win yesterday, uh, it was good for us. 
And so uh, I feel like it gave us the momentum going into this next game, and I feel like we're going to execute uh, the the plan to our best ability. Uh, I, I keep hearing that that you know the first game is always the toughest game, um, but I never understood it because I never uh, played in March. But um, we're gonna approach it like how we approach every game, um, which is going one and zero, winning a day, uh, doing rehab, and just doing everything that that we've been doing throughout the course of the year uh, because it's it's been giving us success. So uh, we're not looking too far ahead. We're not looking in the past. We're looking at the present and focusing on that. Marquis, we've talked to you a lot this year. Um, I can't remember too many times where you've made jokes in press settings. You've done it twice now today. Is there a reason why you're lighter making jokes at this time of the year in the NCAA tournament? I mean, life is fun. I mean, I'm here. It's a blessing to be here. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy and grateful that I get to be, you know, here playing in March Madness, so just having fun. And that's a part of my personality, too, so. You know, if, if this is off base, just ignore it. I'm wondering, did you follow Tyler Eulis, who was UK's 5'8 point guard about five years ago? About, dang, you did your research. Yeah, it was about five <laughs> years ago. Uh, but Tyler Eulis, uh, before I even knew he was playing Kentucky, you know, I. I studied him, I watched him, you know, uh, in his college days on what gained him success. Um, so just his defense and just his playmaking ability, you know, I watched and studied over the course of the years. And I try to implement that into my game. And it's just so crazy to see that, you know, he's now on the sideline, a GA at Kentucky. Um, and it feels like a full circle moment because just a few years ago, I was asking him tips on what I could do to become a better player and he helped me, so he's, he's much like a big brother to me. Third row. The Kentucky player said that they weren't watching any of these other March Madness games. Have you guys been tuned in, and any of those games stand out to you? Uh, John? Oh, my fault. Yeah, I mean, we've been watching it. We just um, try to use some of the game as motivation. Um, we've seen Purdue, um, teams, UVA, just coming in and not taking like every possession or they losing off like a one possession. So we just try to learn from it and just, we didn't want to be that example as well. So we just trying to go out there and have fun really. Naquan? Right, yeah, we definitely use those games as motivation. We seen like, uh, like lower seed teams come in and play like very hard and, you know, upset some teams. So we, like Keontae said, we didn't want that happening to us. So. We tried to, you know, remove like the seedings from like our names or whatnot, and just play as hard as we could. Marquise, um, it's March. I mean, it's the best time of college basketball, so it's hard not to watch, you know, games um, nowadays. But uh, I just watch basketball. I'm in love with basketball, so whenever I get a chance to, you know, wind down and turn on the TV, you know, I watch some games here and there. Any other questions? Front row. Uh, D. Scott Fritch and uh, KSAT Athletics. Nate Kwan, I'm just curious if you mentioned playing ball for four years now, and we had talked in the summer about your experience and heading forward. Can you describe to me just what the season has been like for you and also where you can go from here? Uh, only the Lord knows where I can go from here. Uh, and, you know, over the season, like in the off season, I'll definitely like be working hard and stuff like that. But the experience was, uh, you know, new to me, like coming into this league. I've always heard that it was going to be like the best conference in college basketball. And I know it was going to be super physical. And so like that was something that I wanted to do so I can prove myself to, you know, uh, to, like families and stuff like that. And like the coaching staff, they believed in me. And so definitely I want to get better for like uh, for me the following year. Anyone else? All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. My son lives. My son lives at one fifty eight in Amsterdam. Amsterdam, really? Yeah, that's not too far. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Have a good one.
Reminder, the Kansas State locker room is still open. Also, Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference and all others in the NCAA Digital Media Hub. You can find that at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Appreciate all your help waiting for the handheld mic and letting us know who you are. So you guys have been great to work with. Okay, we're about ready to start with Coach Tang. Hey, hey, how's it going? See you. All right, you have 20 minutes of questions. 20? Yeah. I think I'll use them all. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> oh. here we go. Who has the first question? Oh, they done. <laughs> Coach Tang, D. Scott Fritch, and KSA Athletics. Um, Interested in uh, what you've thought of Naquan's play this season and just his upside? Um, you know, I think uh, the adjustment to Division One basketball, uh, it actually went pretty quick for Quan, but then the adjustment to scouting reports um, then kind of took a toll on him, and he's learning how to work consistently, you know, and uh, that, that's going to help his game. Uh, you know, to be more consistent because we've seen him be really good and then really bad. Um, uh, he's got as much talent as anybody I've, I've ever coached. And so his upside is through the roof. Uh, we just need him to um, just continue to, you know, develop the same old boring habits and, and build a consistent work ethic. Coach, how valuable was, was David last night and how valuable can he be going forward? Uh, he, you know, David was huge. He did a great job defensively. Uh, he might, might, might be our best defensive player, you know, with his ability to, to switch and guard multiple positions. And then, you know, his speed at his size, you know, separates him from the other guys his size. So uh, if we can get, you know, close to double figures and rebounding the way he did, uh, it's going to be very valuable to us. Aaron Beard with the AP. Last night, Ed Coley said that Oscar Shibway has that it factor, like Dennis Rodman kind of thing on the rebounding. What, when you look at him on film, kind of what, what stands out to you about the challenge that a guy like that represents and how you as a team sort of try to keep a guy like that contained, I guess, for lack of a better word? Well, uh, I didn't have to look at Oscar on film. I recruited him really hard um, when he was coming out of high school and then uh, watched him play for two years and competed against him at West Virginia. You know, so we've seen it up close and personal. And he does have that it. And Oscar's in their wins and losses, Oscar gets double doubles and he does that. And so, um, you know, we will try to make it difficult for him, but, you know, guys like that do what they do. Third row. Yes, uh, Jeff Drummond from uh, Rivals, Kentucky. I asked uh, some of your players uh, who Kentucky kind of closely resembles, if anyone, in, in your league in that great competition that you faced. Uh, do you have any thoughts uh, along those lines? Um, you know, I, I don't know about as a team. We, we have, like, individual comps, like each guy plays similar to another. And uh, we were unable to find a comp for Oscar Chibwe in our league. Middle of the room. Hey, Jerome, Kel Chabonet here with the Kansas City Star. Uh, two questions for you. First off, a quick one. Were you able to sleep last night? No. So you're, you're on zero sleep right now. I don't know about zero, but, like, it, it went pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, same for me. Um, and I didn't stay up scouting Kentucky, so. Uh, but secondly, I know you're a guy who likes to make the other team to rea react to what you do. I'm wondering, with athletic big guys like David and Naquan, do you think you can make Kentucky react to those guys with the post players that they have? Ooh. Um, now, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to just be who we are. 
you know, this, we can't change anything. And I, I don't know. I think Cal's a guy who just, they do what they do. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I want to make this, uh, the game plan as simple as possible for our guys so we can play with freedom. And I'm sure he wants to do the same with his. Alec, I'll your rivals. Coach Tang, how do you challenge your guys to be physical and willing to kind of hit bodies on the inside against a physical player like Oscar Shibuy? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, like, you can't, um, you can't wrestle with Oscar. Right, you're gonna lose that. We don't have anybody on our team who can like go into a physical wrestling match with him. So we're gonna have to use our speed and our quickness to make it uh, difficult for him. And then we're gonna have to gang gang rebound. But I mean, everybody asks these questions about Oscar, right? But it, it's those dudes out there that are making threes, right? That th those are the ones that like determine winning or losing. And so we we got we got we got a whole team out there to guard. It's not just Oscar Chibwe. Any other questions? Third row. Hey, Coach. John Huang, NOLA Media. One of the other guys that you have to deal with is, is the point guard, Kentucky's point guard, Kaysen Wallace. Big, strong guy. And, you know, on the surface, you're looking at you got a little guy, they got a big guy. How, how do you anticipate heading into that matchup? Uh, sounds like they got a big guy at every position, and we got a little guy at every position. So you know, <laughs> we're gonna have to figure something out. But uh, Kason's another kid that I recruited really hard out of high school, and know him very well. You know, I I've just always thought he was the the ultimate winner uh, in the state of Texas in high school basketball, and um, it's going to be a challenge. Front row. Yeah, D. Scott Fritch and uh, Case had it legs. Coach uh, Naquan mentioned that this was a dream come true for him um, earlier uh, yesterday. I'm just curious what kind of dream this has been for you. Um, well, this whole year has been, you know, a dream come true for me from, you know, the moment I got the job uh, to putting the team together and, you know, just, you know, through the whole course of the season, the way our guys have um, embraced us as a staff and embraced each other and, you know, and culminating in playing in the ultimate tournament, you know, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a dream and one that we don't want to see end. So uh, I'm super excited about the opportunity we have for tomorrow. And, um, you know, so we just, just want to keep living this thing, try, trying to be together a little bit longer. Third row. Coach Calipari has emphasized over and over again how difficult it is to be a coach among the college ranks. Uh, would, would you agree with that? And, you know, coming from um, uh, being an assistant coach for so long under a successful program, uh, there is a fraternity of, of college coaches out there. And do you, do you feel that sense of camaraderie out, out there among the coaching staff? Um. I know with the guys that I've lived life with the last few years, last 20 years, uh, we have more than a camaraderie. It's a, it's a family. Uh, 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 I mean, one of those guys, my daughter's godfather, and the other one I call about any advice that has nothing to do with the game of basketball. Uh, you know, so yeah, we do build this bond together, and um, you know, it's it's difficult to do what we do. Uh, but I wouldn't want to be doing anything else, you know, and uh, anything in life that's worth accomplishing or, or great is going to have difficulties in it. And, you know, I, I'm thankful to be in a position where the things that are important to me, you know, character, integrity, love, you know, faith, that I get to pour into my young men every day. I wouldn't want anybody else doing it. To our right, second row. Mitch Fortner from came in Radio Manhattan. Um, yesterday's second session was very blue uh, when it came to the crowd. And of course, it's been really tough to play on the road in the Big 12. Uh, how much of the message is being able to play in front of what will, might be a road environment tomorrow? 
Well, I'm colorblind, so I didn't see that. You know, it all looked purple to me. And uh, so, I mean, you know, we, we, we've played in tough environments, and we've won in tough environments. We've lost in tough environments. Tomorrow's not going to be about the environment. It's going to be about the 10 dudes that are on the floor. To our left. Timmy Rissen, Manhattan Mercury. How, how much has Cam progressed this season? And, and what, what has he grown the most in? Uh, well, early on, uh, Cam was going 100 miles an hour. And he's learned how to slow down and you know, cha play at different paces. And then also like figuring out what he can do to help us win, that he, his value. And, and sometimes that means actually doing less or trying to do less. And so uh, he's just really embraced uh, what we need them to do to give us a chance to win. Coach, you mentioned now a lot of the questions have been about Oscar in regards to Kentucky. That they have other guys that are threats. Jacob Toppin is one of those guys who's really playing well at this time of year. Just curious about your thoughts on, on what you've seen from him. From him. Uh, I mean, J Jacob and Reeves, uh, I mean, those two guys, long, athletic, guard, wings, wherever you need them, you know, uh, bo both of the good defenders, you know, they cause you problems with their length, rebound, you know, topping when, and whenever Kaysan gets, you know, his 10 seconds break, then, uh, you know, Toppin plays the point for him. You know I mean? He's just so valuable and so versatile and experienced, right? Like that, like experience trumps talent all the time right now. And so uh, you just, just can't, you can't put a number on the value of that. Middle of the room. What would you say is the hardest thing about getting ready for a second game in the tournament on 36 hours prep time? Is it rest? Is it actually game planning from you guys? What's the hardest thing about it? Um, coming down off the high of the win, um, then, you know, getting the rest that's needed, you know, for your body to recover and figuring out the balance of how much is too much and not enough. Second row. I have a little bit of a big picture question for you. Uh, you hired Kevin Sutton on your staff to, as uh, dir director of strategies. I'm curious, kind of what was your thinking in adding a position like that at a time when we see more college coaches adding more positions, recruiting specific or analytics? It seems like there's more coaching infrastructure going into doing the job. Yeah. Um, Kevin in particular, I've known for over 25 years. We worked five-star camp together. Um, back when I first started coaching. And he was someone that I really leaned on and would call and ask questions because he had started, you know, Mount Verde Academy and uh, before that Montrose Christian. And uh, just I think he's one of the best player development guys in the world. Uh, worked with USA Basketball. And so just super blessed to be able to even have the opportunity to hire him. Um, I, I've got uh, three, I guess there are four of them now, uh, former GAs and managers that work in the front office at the Phoenix Suns. And uh, those guys told me that, you know, the four guys that are on the bench across the country are probably the same. It's the next level that separates you. And so my chief of staff, Marco Bourne, uh, Kevin Sutton, director of strategy, Austin Carpenter, you know, player development, uh, Anthony Winchester in the video coordinator's role, they do a great job of building our GA program and our managers, and because those guys spend way more time with our players than we actually allow to. And so um, that's where I feel like is going to bring separation in our program uh, because it will enhance our development of our players because we're not always going to get the guys that are already there. Not that I don't think that we're going to land some five-star guys that people think are one and done and all of that, but um, you know, we're going to find that talent that's there and be able to develop them. And then people are going to ask, man, where did they come from? Second row. Can I just ask a follow up to that? Is, is this just kind of the nature of the way things are going in college basketball? We've seen in college football analysts and quality control types kind of fill in these positions. Is this just what it's going to take in the new landscape of the portal and everything else to takes more hands to do the job? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a long time ago, somebody said many hands make light work. 
and it greatly applies to what we do. And it's, we have to spend more time recruiting our own guys than we do the guys that are not here. And the goal is to be able to show them the big picture that we have for them. Otherwise, when I was at Baylor, uh, I think the, the national average was 43% transfer rate, and our, our average was 16%. And I hope to develop that same type of program here where guys don't want to leave, but they, they, they want to come. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all. See you in quite 20 minutes. All right. Appreciate it. See you tomorrow. Yes, sir. Thank you all.